What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, just finished watching Survivor Series War Games on stream on the In The Clutch page, man. Shout out to everyone that was there and part of the stream. We had a good time tonight. Yes, I lost my voice. I believe I started losing my voice during the actual um, War Games match. Yes, lost my voice. Um, obviously, I got it. Got turned up for the War Games match because uh, it was it was really good. The men's War Games match, I lost my voice mid-match. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that, y'all. I know my voice sounds awful, but got to get into my thoughts and opinions on this show. This show was fantastic. Had a great time. And let's start going down through the list of matches. One thing I can say, a great positive about the show, it was only five matches on the card, bro. Five matches on the card, wasn't over bloated. It was quick, straight into the point, and I can really appreciate that. So, let's start with the first uh, match, the Women War Game match between Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Mia Yim, Becky Lynch, uh, Bailey, EO Sky, Dakota Kai, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley. Now, this match, in my opinion, I've, I've seen better uh, Women War Games matches in NXT. Um, I've seen better from a lot of the competitors in here. The only thing that kind of held this match down, in my personal opinion, was the botches. There was clearly a lot of botches in this match. Um, but for the most part, I was wrong on the prediction. I thought um, that the Heels was going to win here, but they actually didn't. Um, they made real good use of Rhea Ripley as the enforcer, someone that you should really, uh, you know, have to really worry about because of how you know uh how dominant she is as a wrestler and in her character um there was a point where bianca belair was like pretty much taking a nap during, during the match and that's the problem with these type of matches people would just sit there and just be laying there the entire match so it kind of you know it kind of throws it off you're wondering where's bianca belair she had a pretty good showing as well love uh that the tables and trash can lids were introduced i just really wish you know it was a much tighter match in when it comes to like the botches there was plenty of botches throughout this match that were quite noticeable but overall it was still enjoyable i love becky lynch having her moment coming back in there standing off with uh bailey that was a nice interaction uh, her even standing off with uh with rhea ripley was pretty cool but ultimately ultimately uh the match ends when uh bianca belair hits uh bailey with a kod onto the lap like onto the on the edge where the, the ropes in the, the cages she hits a kod she falls down uh between the ropes in the cage and then there's a table set up with damage control the tag team champs laid on the table and uh becky lynch jumps from the top of the cage threw both of them on the table and one two three pin victory uh becky lynch pinned uh the tag team champs um that was uh I, I, some people in the chat were kind of like they didn't like how that ended because they felt like the damage control it just made them look weak and i guess you could say that since they did eat the pin there the tag champs ate the pin there it kind of makes them look a little bit weak you know maybe nikki cross could have been the person to eat the pin in my opinion in a way they ate the pin too they got sent to the gulags that 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 jumping from the top all the way from the top of the uh, the cage all the way through the table was a, a beautiful looking spot um but yeah, uh, I, I can understand people's criticism there. I don't even know what you do with damage control. I was, the only reason why I picked the heels because I was thinking maybe Rhea would be the one to challenge um, Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship at some point. But I think damage control and Bailey, they they shouldn't, that they need to be moving on to something else, especially Bailey. They need to be moving on to something else. Maybe they do a program with Rhea Ripley for the Raw Women's Championship. Um, she wasn't in the pinning combination, but it was good to see Rhea catch the blue mist to the face and receive the beats. Oh, that was glorious. I loved every second of that. Y'all know I did. So overall, this match was okay. It was a good way to start the show. If if it wasn't as many botches in, in, in kind of spots that didn't really look that clean, I think the match would have been better. But overall, great way to start off the show. So, we got AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. And I love that they gave these guys some time in the match. In my opinion, they started off slow, but it picked up 
it was enjoyable definitely enjoyable i pick aj styles to win this because i felt like aj needed this win and the one thing i did like about was the oc was in aj's corner also judgment day was in finn Balor's corner and they started brawling on the outside and went through the crowd so now they're out the match because a lot of times with judgment day matches you know how they end in screwy fashion so now that they were separated they're outside of the match now it's just aj and Finn, and I love the back and forth. I love Finn trying to hit the Styles Clash on AJ Styles, and I love Finn having, uh, um, no, AJ having Finn Balor and like the crap, uh, the calf crusher, and it looked like Finn's about to tap, but he was able to, to uh, maneuver out of it and get out of it. Like there was a close, there was a lot of situations that could have went either way, but ultimately, AJ Styles ended up getting the, uh, getting the, getting the win here when he should have and i'm glad hopefully this can you know they can do something more with aj styles going forward but i'm just glad they got rid of the outside shenanigans let them finish out the match it was enjoyable crowd was into it i started getting into it towards the end and the right person won here so solid match enjoyable in my opinion all right the lowest point of the show i think all of us can agree here some of you may like this match SmackDown's Women's Championship match between Ronda Rousey and uh, Shotzi. And, of course, Ronda Rousey had uh, Shayna Baszler accompany her to the ring. Did I care for this match? Absolutely not. The reason why I didn't care for it, because I couldn't buy into it. I, I just can't buy in to someone of Ronda's caliber of a, of a physical, you know, competitor losing to Shotzi. I just can't buy into it. That's, and that's the problem when booking someone like Ronda. And to be honest with you, like Ronda's past few matches have not been that enjoyable, mainly because it's a combination of her not being as as good as she should be in the ring or as well versed, and then her competitors not really being able to like. I guess I don't know. In a sense, like it's not. Ma it's like their their matches are not meshing. Like. Ronda and in Charlotte, they can have a good match. Ronda and Sasha, they can have a good match, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I even think she could possibly have a good match with Becky, but it seems like some of these other people lately, and I could, I'm just going off of late, the past few matches, they just haven't been that good. And this is more or less the same. There's some botches here. I don't really like Ronda's armbar. It does not look good because you can see that her the person's arm is just like this. It don't look good. So I don't know. It, it's, the moves don't seem as fluid as they should be. Uh, someone made an interesting comment on stream. It seems like Ronda Rousey was doing so much. Like when she first came into the company, she looked better in the ring than she does her second go around, which is crazy to think. So I don't know. But uh, we all knew Ronda was winning here, retaining here. I did not care. It was a low point in the match. The crowd was kind of dead for this match. Some of you guys may have enjoyed this match. That's cool. That's awesome. Me, personally, I just not, did not care. I didn't care when Shotzi won. I would be more interested in Ronda and Raquel, even though we've seen Ronda and Raquel have a match. That's when Ronda was a babyface. I would be more interested in it now, since Ronda did attack Raquel uh, on SmackDown. So maybe they can build a feud off that. That I would be more interested in, and I could possibly buy a little bit more, because... Raquel is she's a she's a pretty big woman and uh it looked like she can somewhat handle herself in a storyline wise against Ronda Rousey. So we'll see what goes forward. But SmackDown, they need some help in that division. They need somebody that can combat Ronda outside of Becky Lynch right now. And they don't have that person other than Raquel, maybe if Charlotte comes back, but I don't want to see Charlotte in another title opportunity. Not not so quickly, at least not now. All right, this, in my opinion, this next match was, when we first watched it, at the time, it was match of the night. And some would say this could be match of the night. The United States Championship match between Austin Theory, Seth Rollins, and Bobby Lashley. This match was great. I called it when they announced it on Monday, this past Monday. This was fantastic. This match had everything I wanted it to have. You had 
Austin Theory trying to show everybody that he's changed and he's in he's in a different mode. You have Bobby Lashley. He's turned it up to 11 ever since Brock Lesnar attacked him and caused him to lose the United States Championship. So now he's in a different mode. He's all about sending people to the gulags with the quickness. And you have Seth Rollins. It's Seth freaking Rollins. He's at the always at the top of his game. This match was great. This was so fun. It was a lot of high spots, back and forths. I love this. If you haven't seen the match, go watch this. This is just fantastic. Fantastic. One of the sequences I love is both Bobby Lashley and Austin Theory. They are like on their knees. They're set up for the stomp. Seth Rollins pretty much jumps on Austin Theory's back as leverage and hits the stomp to uh to Bobby Lashley. That was such a cool sequence and a different way to effectively use his finisher. That shit was insane. And towards the end of end of the match, like um well, it wasn't towards the end of the match. It was another spot. Seth Rollins is out of the frame. He's like outside the ring or whatnot. You can't see him. So Bobby Lashley has um Austin Theory in his hurt locker submission. And obviously, you know, Austin Theory finally tries to get out of it. So he uses his leverage from the turnbuckles to flip him over. Well, while he's in a pinning combination, he still has a hurt locker, but Austin Theory has his shoulders pinned. Seth Rollins comes from the top rope out of nowhere and hits a frog splash on the Bobby Lashley while he has a hurt locker applied. Fantastic spot as well. Bobby Lashley having both Seth and Austin Theory in the Hurt Locker was a cool visual too. But the crazy spot of the night, which was out of nowhere, loved it, is when Bobby Lashley, pretty well, actually, no, um, where uh, Seth Rollins is doing the Falcon Arrow, it goes from the top rope, hits the Falcon Arrow, or whatever. And he pretty much, I want to say, I'm, I'm trying to remember the sequence, Bobby Lashley ends up. Like he has, um, he has Austin Theory up in an upward position. Bobby Lashley hits Seth while he has Austin Theory up in an upward position. He spears Seth Rollins, and then they fall. And Austin Theory was able to roll over at the last second to cover Seth Rollins for the one, two, three victory. It was one of those situations where he was at the right place at the right time, and he is the United States champion once again. I loved it. I loved it. No one came out looking weak in this situation. Bobby Lashley really didn't get a chance to even get into the pinning combination. He just ended up spearing Seth Rollins or whatnot, who happened to be performing another move on Austin Theory. Austin Theory was at the right place at the right time, man. That shit was chef's kiss amazing. And it, it, it worked because it came out of nowhere. Austin Theory is the new champ. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him now. I feel like they did a big reset once he dropped the uh, Money in the Bank. Triple H did a big reset on Austin Theory. And I'm interested to see where they take him moving forward. I felt like if you have Austin Theory change his character like this, it only makes sense for him to win this match. So that way you can really expand his character. That's why I said that. I'm, I'm glad the match ended this way. Either way fantastic match at this point before we seen the men's war games match this was the best match of the night so now we get to the men's war games match the bloodline versus the brawl and brew sheamus butch ridge holland drew mcintyre kevin owens now throughout the night the story was can they trust Sami Zayn? snitching jay uso because he was definitely snitching went to roman he told him what happened on Friday night. Even though Roman can literally just turn on the TV and he would have saw what happened on Friday night. But I guess Roman doesn't watch SmackDown when he's not there. Whatever. So, Snitch and Jay went to Roman like, yo, he was talking to Kevin Owens and then he lied to me about it. So, Roman's like, I'm going to talk to him. You do your part. I'm going to go talk to him. I'll know if he's lying. I can tell. I'll know if, if, he, if we can trust him or not. So, Sammy comes in later on in the show. He was, you know, Roman basically said, yo, tell me what happened. And Sammy told him the truth. And he was like, well, why you lie to Jay? And he told him, well, Jay doesn't really rock with me anyway. So if I would have told him, he wouldn't have been in the right space 
anyway when it came to our match later on that night. Which Jay is making, uh, Sammy's making a very good point here. Whatever. He's like, bro, my allegiance is with you. So he's like, all right, cool. We're going to go out there and handle business. Like they hug. Roman has this look of concern. Like he's, he's hugging him, but he's concerned. So the match starts. And pretty much Jay is catching the beats because bra uh, Brawling Brutes, you know, Butch, um, uh, Seamus, Butch, Rich, Holland, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, they have the, the man advantage in the World Games match. And what made this match so good, this was more so story driven. You can tell we were invested more in what the story of Sami Zayn and what's going to happen here. And that's what made this match even that much better. So, Jay's getting the beats. It's time for one more member of the Bloodline to come in. You think it's going to be uh, Jimmy. And I like that they were switching up. The You would think who would come out next, but they would kind of swerve you on there. I appreciate that. Roman holds back Jimmy. Sammy, you go out there. And I was like, okay, now, now we're getting into the story bad. So Sammy has to go out there and save Jay, right? So he goes out there. Obviously, Sammy catches the beats too. He saves Jay a couple times or whatnot. And as, as things start going, you know, more people start going into the match or whatnot. It's always the Brawl and Bruce, Seamus, Butch, Rich Holland, all of them, Drew, uh, Kevin Owens. They always ended up having an advantage, obviously, because of the extra man advantage they won on SmackDown. So the Bloodline would get some type of momentum, but it would always come back to them catching the beats ultimately. And there was a couple, there was a spot here where um, Sammy saved Jay. He was like, bro, I got you. And then there was another spot where um, Jay ended up super kicking Sammy Zayn or whatnot. And he didn't feel sorry about it. And there was another spot where Sammy and, 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 and Jay, they're getting back and forth on setting up the table. Like they're, they're really building this story here. So finally, Roman, fast forward, Roman gets into the match, right? Roman gets into the match. Roman is charging up, but then he started having issues. They started jumping on Roman. I love the spot where everyone was taking the, the beats to the chest. That shit, and all the blood, bloodline members was just catching the, the, the stiff beats to the chest on the ropes. I thought that was a beautiful spot, man. Um, I love what they did with Solo Sokoa coming in here as the real enforcer. He was wrecking shop. You can see Roman Reigns smiling in the back in the cage because Solo Sokoa definitely showed out tonight. That was a beautiful showing by him. So, we get towards the end where Kevin Owens pretty much locks eyes with Roman Reigns. We know... They're, they have some great history, man. Their, their matches they had. I want to say it was last year. I could be wrong. I think it was last year when Roman was really early into his title reign. The matches they had were so god dang good. They were fantastic. Fantastic matches between Roman and Kevin Owens uh, last year. Um, so they have they, their, their little stare out and they start going at it or whatnot. And there's one moment. Where that boy, Kevin Owens, it looked like he was about to win. He hit him with the pop-up power bomb. He hit him with the Stone Cold Stunner. You think it's over. Kevin Owens is about to get the pin on Roman Reigns. One, two. Sami Zayn stops the ref. So, And they were teasing it throughout the match. Sami and Kevin Owens interacting with each other to the point. But it would always, it would always end prematurely because someone else would get involved, right? So I'm like, all right, cool, bet, bet, bet. Now this is the moment. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Of course, crowd is pro Sami Zayn, calling him uh, um, uh, Sami, uh, you know, the Usi chants and um, um, Sami Uso. Crowd loves Sami Zayn in this, in, this, uh, in this match. They're having their conversation. Roman's on the ground. Kevin Owens is like, yo, this is your family? This is your family. This is this is Kevin Owens. Like, yo, this you gonna really do this for him? And then all of a sudden, I don't know if it was Jimmy or Jay. I think it may have been Jimmy tried to hit the super kick on him. I could be wrong. He tried to hit the super kick on Kevin Owens, and then Kevin Owens hit him. I mean, um, Sami Zayn hit Kevin Owens with a low blow. Hit him with a low blow. He goes to check on Roman. Sami Zayn. Sami uh, Roman gives him the acknowledgement, like. Do what you got to do. 
Sami Zayn goes to the corner, hits Kevin Owens with the Huluva kick. And then, as he catches him and lets him fall to the ground, then he gives Jay Uso the nod. He's all yours. Hit the pin. Uh, hit uh, Kevin Owens with the frog smile, and he got the 1-2-3 victory. And that was a big thing there because they've had their beef. And this is Sammy showing his loyalty, like, eat the pin. Go ahead. I'm showing you I'm with you guys. And that was a cool little story beat allowing Jimmy, um, I mean, Jay Uso to hit the pin on Kevin Owens. So after that, Roman embraces uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, Roman embraces um, Sami Zayn. They embracing, you know, they hugging or whatever. And this was a cool moment, which we didn't expect. Jay goes over there and hugs Sami Zayn. Crowd goes crazy. I was shot. Jay actually finally acknowledges him as part of the family. Jay goes over there, hugs. Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn's turn. Then uh, Sami Zayn does his little cool handshake with Jimmy. That's that. It was it was great, bro. And everyone acknowledged him. He's part of the family. He's part of the group. Uh, Sami t- ripped up with the shirt. He he's turned up, and it was great. And I love what they're doing here because they're sti- they're they're planting the seeds. That way now it seems like everybody's on board. And when they turn on him, it's going to be glorious. You know it's coming. We thought it was going to happen tonight, but they're postponing it. So I'll be interested to see what they do. But yeah, this was great. This, to me, is a match of the night because of the storytelling alone. This match was fantastic. The stories of Sammy um, pretty much trying to show the bloodline his allegiance and Roman and everyone else trying to really figure out is he with them like we're trying to figure out as fans are they going to turn on sammy is this the night they turn on sammy or or is this the night sammy turns on them it, the stories and the questions you had in your head were just running through this match and that's what made this match even better this was great fun enjoyed it i had a great time man so I want to ask y'all a question. Comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this pay-per-view? Would you rate this pay-per-view on a scale of 1 to 10? Me personally, I said on the live stream, I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. This was great. Also, where do you think what's going to happen going forward with the Bloodline storyline? When do you guys think they're going to turn on Sammy? And do you think there's going to be a potential feud between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn going forward? Let me know down below. But, and also, let me know what was your favorite match of the night. But I appreciate y'all. Once again, thank you so much for helping me reach 100K subscribers, man. I appreciate y'all kicking it with me, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.